It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about this a little bit Thursday, right? With the ladder sliding down, how it's changing at different rates. Okay. So this is the same as that kind of question here. The numbers aren't as nice, but that's okay. Uh, but if you read through this, again, super classic example here. There's a ladder leaning against the wall. I happen to be on it. It doesn't really matter. The bottom is being pulled away from the wall, and the top is falling down the side of the wall. Okay? So, that looks like this. Now, essentially what you want to do with these while we're in this unit, and when you recognize that it is a related rates question, is determine what rates you know. Sometimes they give you more than one rate of change. There could be all kinds of stuff changing, okay? In this particular case, we simply know that the bottom of the ladder is being pulled away from the wall at three feet per second, okay? That means that this side of this triangle is changing, okay? It is not three, because it's going to be measured in feet, not feet per second. When you see something per second or something per minute, that's a rate of change, that's a derivative of something, okay? So three is the derivative of B. So right below it, or somewhere on my paper, just to denote it, I'm going to write the dBdt, that we're always deriving with respect to time here, because it's per second, per minute, per hour, is positive 3. Now, it's positive because B is increasing, okay? If we were pushing the ladder towards the wall at 3 feet per second, then dBdt would be negative 3 feet per second, because it's getting smaller, right? Okay. Um, it tells us in the question, too, sometimes it's confusing, that we want to know how fast the ladder's falling, when the base is 39 feet away from the wall, you do not put 39 in for that B there. You don't draw a 39 where B is, okay? Like B will be 39 when we want to use it later on, but it's not 39 all the time. We have to let it be a variable for this whole process to work, okay? The ladder is 50 feet. That is not changing. So we can put a number in for that. We'll put a 50 right here, 50 feet. And this side of the triangle is changing. So we'll give it a variable. Okay? And the whole goal here is, again, we know what dB dt is. We know how fast B is changing. We want to know how fast H is changing. So over here to, again, this is just what I like to do. I'm going to write dH dt equals, and that's my goal. Okay? That's Omar. So, since B is positive, does that mean H is negative? If H, it doesn't matter that B was positive. H is going to be a negative rate of change. So if H is a negative, dH dt should be negative when I'm done because it's decreasing, it's getting smaller, okay? All right. Um, so our main goal is to get an equation that has H in it and derive it. That's going to cause dH dt to pop up. If we can, and we usually will be able to, we want to get an equation that has H and B in it. So when we derive it, we're going to get a dH dt, which is what we want, and there's going to be a dB dt, which is what we're trying to work well, which we know, all right? And in this particular case, like it says on the top of the paper, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So it turns out that regardless of what H and B are at any instant in time, they must fit that equation, okay? H squared plus B squared has to equal 50 squared. It's the law of nature. You all right? Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, now, this equation here is not going to help us find dH dt. dH dt is not even in this equation. H and B are in this equation. So if I know B, I can find H. If I know H, I can find B. That's what that equation's for. But if I derive it with respect to time, I'm going to get dH dt to pop up. So that's our first goal, right? To get an equation that has what we want in it. So we derive it, and that's the derivative stuff we're going to do here. Ah, it's not crazy difficult. Yo, chill, computer. So we get 2h dh dt plus 2b db dt, and that's going to equal zero. I'm not going to lie over there. Is our emergency happening? Okay. That's such a good, what can I say? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> That's our second equation, right? We want to know what dH dt, here it is right there, bam, want to know what that is. There's three other variables in this equation. There's h, there's, that looks sloppy, there's an h, 
there's a B, and there's a DBDT. So for us to find DHDT, we have to know those other three things. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite that equation, plugging in what I know. I have 2 times H. I don't know what H is, so I'm going to leave that blank for right now. Okay? I'm leaving a blank where H has to go. Like We have to find H to find DHDT. All right? So sometimes you're going to do a, uh, have a question like this, you're not going to know what a variable is. Leave a blank and think, like, how do I find that? Okay? To find a variable, you need another equation. All right? Remember, we have two. We have the Pythagorean theorem, we have the derivative equation. So we have plus 2. B happens to be 39 at this moment. That's where the 39 goes when you're plugging into the derivative. Okay? Not in your picture, not in the original equation. If something's changing, you don't plug in its value until after you derive. And dB dt is 3. All good? So the only thing we're missing, once I know what H is, this is an algebra problem. Okay? So we got to find H. And typically what happens, and this is not always the case, but a lot of times, you go back to the original equation. If you know what B is, you can find what H is. Because there's only two variables in that equation. Okay? The original is usually a lot simpler. So we have H squared plus 39 squared equals 50 squared. Okay, and I'm simply doing this to find out what h is. So h happens to be the square root of whatever that is, and I don't want to do that in my head. So 50 squared is 2500 minus 39 squared. That's the square root of 979. Okay, and if you really wanted to, you could turn that into a decimal, but I'm gonna let it lie like that. Okay. If you do turn it into a decimal, I'm not sure if you're going to have a calculator on a question like this. Sometimes in AP test you don't, sometimes you do. And um, in my class, I mean, I don't know, if, I, if you don't have a calculator on the test, you probably won't see something like square root of 979. All right? Probably a little bit easier numbers. But either way, now all that's left to do is solve for that DHCT. Something you can do before you do that, do you see the common number here? We can divide all these things by 2. So we can cancel a 2 out. That makes this a little bit easier. That's about it. And then solve this, 39 times 3 is 117, right? Right. So dh dt is negative 117 over the square root of 979. And that's going to be in feet, was it feet per second? Okay. And that looks kind of cumbersome. That's just some dumb number. Uh, the square root of 979. So negative 3.739. It's a decimal there. Okay. No, no, no. So yeah, most likely you're not going to have a calculator on, on the test. All right. I make it a little bit simpler. Like I don't think that's impossible, but it, I mean, it's not my goal to make you multiply out 39 times 39. Really, I mean, okay, okay. All right, let's take a look at the first one on the homework. Okay, I did these in period two and recorded again in the auto. It's better than it was the other day. Still not great, so I'll I'll compare which one sounds better. Second period or this period? All right, all right. Um, this is kind of weird because the picture is a little bit weird, but basically what it's saying is there's a boat, it's in the water, okay? Can you guys draw a boat? It looks like that. There's a boat. Great. Okay. Good. I know. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I took a boat drawing class in college. I told you. Yeah. There's a rope attached to the bow of the boat. That's the front. Okay, it's attached to a pulley, um, and the boat's 10 feet below the pulley. Now, this is misleading. It sounds like the pulley's like right above the boat. It's not. It's over here somewhere. Okay, does that make sense? Like the pulley's pulling it in. That 10 feet is this side right here. Okay. So that's what's happening. It's kind of weird reading that. Maybe I can phrase it better. Um, but essentially, you're reeling in that boat, but that 10 feet is not changing. 
because the pulley is up in the air still and the boat's going to stay in the water. Everybody okay? What is changing though, since I'm reeling this boat in, is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So it's different than the latter question, right? The latter question, the hypotenuse wasn't changing. It doesn't really matter. It's a different size changing. And the bottom of that triangle is changing because the boat's being pulled in. So we'll call that anything you want. I'm going to call it X. Okay? And they're telling you the pulley is pulling that rope in at a rate of 20 feet per minute. Well, that's a derivative. It's the derivative of Z in this case. So I'm going to write DZ DT. It's not 20, though. It's negative 20. Because it's getting smaller, yep. Yeah. So the question is not going to say negative 20. So it says it's getting pulled in at 20 feet, whatever, okay? So I know it's very difficult. Just think, is it getting bigger or smaller? And then assign the sign that's supposed to be there. All right. Um, the question says, what rate is the boat approaching the dock? Well, that would be how fast X is changing. So we want dx dt. And my answer key I put online has like a little rubric kind of thing. I fill out like what we know, what we want, what we're going to use. You can do it if you want. Okay. Um, but this is just Pythagorean theorem again. So. The reason why we're using this is because it's on our Pythagorean theorem sheet, but also because I know how fast Z is changing and I want to know how fast X is changing. So I want an equation that links them together. Okay? And if I derive that, I get the rates of change to pop up. And we just get 2X dx dt equals the derivative of 10 squared is 0. Everybody knows that, because 10 squared is just 100, which is a number equals 2z dz dt. What do you mean? Like move things around to equal zero? Yeah. No, so, no we, so when we did optimization, we want to find where it equals zero because that's where maxes and mins were happening, right? Here, I'm trying to find out where anything's zero. I'm trying to find out specifically what dx dt is right now. Okay. Cool. So you don't need to move anything around. Basically, you want to move things so dx dt is by itself. But let's plug in all the stuff we know first. Okay? So we have two times x. I don't know x right now, right? I don't think so. What do we know, z? Yeah, we know z. Because it says there's 125 feet of rope out. We're not supposed to know dx dt, so I'm going to write dx dt in my equation, right? I'm looking for that. That's going to be there. That equals 2 times z. z is 125, because that's how much rope is out. And it's being reeled in at 20 feet per second, so dz dt is negative 20. And again, this is going to become an algebra question. You just got to find the stuff that you need. So you have to find x. And just like we did last time, we're going to use that first equation to find x. Because I know what z is. So x squared plus 100 equals 125 squared. Okay? And everybody knows 125 squared. 15625? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that means x squared is the square root of 15525. I did write x squared, thank you. It's okay? That reduces, you can turn it into a decimal. My only qualm with uh, turning it into a decimal right now is you have to write out the decimal like six places. Like your final answer has to be accurate to three places. So if you round this to three places itself, your final answer might not be accurate to three places anymore. Once, once you chop off some of the numbers, you lose accuracy as you go forward, okay? So I'm gonna leave it as that, root 15, 525. And just solve this out. Like, this is not, again, super difficult. We can divide both sides by 2. Let's get that out of there. 20 times 125. So you can do 10 times 125. That's 1250. And then double it. That's 2500. So it's negative 2500 over the square root. And that does reduce... Well, I'm not gonna, I don't care about that. That's just too much, too much arithmetic. We're just going to divide this out. That's 2,500. Nope. 
That's 2,500. Divided by the square root was mine. Whatever. Square root of 15 by 25. And it's 20.064. Negative. And that's feet per minute. Uh, yeah. All right. Take a look at number three real quick. So Cassie and Cody are two students I used to teach a very long time ago. It's a super old question. Uh, but basically, let's drop up. Okay. Oh, yeah, because I have those two kids here, yeah. Um, so basically, the scenario doesn't matter. Someone's running this way. Someone's running this way. And there's a distance between them, right? Now, in this case, the whole reason why I cook up a question like this is because now all three sides of this triangle are changing, right? This side's moving because the person's running up. This side's moving because the... Cassie's running west. Yo, why aren't you running? And this side's moving because they're both getting bigger. So Z has to get bigger too. And, and just because there's like multiple things changing doesn't mean it's any harder. Just means you have to be given more rates of change, which you are. I told you Cody's running north at seven miles an hour. That's how fast that Y side is changing. So I care that it's not it doesn't spell that out like this exactly, but I mean that's exactly what's going on. Cassie's running at five miles an hour. All right. Now, I'm not telling you what X and Y are. In this particular case, I'm telling you how far is the distance between them increasing. So that would be the rate of change of Z, which is dz dt. That's what we're looking for. So I need an equation with Z in it. It's going to be Pythagorean the theorem. Um, how fast is that changing two hours after they started running? Okay. But I didn't tell you what Y was, but if Cody's running at seven miles an hour and two hours have gone by, Y is going to be 14. Okay. X is going to be 10 after two hours. We're not going to plug those in yet. Just that's what we, we need that information. So X squared plus Y squared has to equal Z squared. They're all variables now because they're all changing. You just derive it. 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt is 2z dz dt. Now we have six variables, but we know four of them already. We know x was 10. Anybody not okay with that? That x is 10? Yeah, okay, it's 5 times 2. We know dx dt is 5 plus 2. We know y was 14. We know dy dt is 7 equals 2. We don't know z, so we'll just leave a big blank spot there because we need it. And we don't know dz dt, but that's what we're looking for, so we leave that in the equation. Cool. And we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find this. x was 10, so 10 squared is 100. 14 squared is 196, has to equal z squared. So 296 is z squared, which means z is the square root of 296. Okay. And same thing, we could reduce that, like a 4 goes into that. Um, but before we even start looking at that, there by C, we can divide every single term by 2. If you have a calculator, it doesn't matter too much. But if you don't have a calculator, you want to think, how can I simplify this? Those 2s go away. That's 50 plus 98. That's 148 on this side. Uh, 296, if you take a 4 out of there, becomes 74. So root 296 is 2 root 74. Same thing. And then you divide. Okay? If you divide by that, 
Uh, 148 divided by 2 is 74. Is that okay? Divide both sides by 2 again. And anything divided by its square root is just its square root. So it's 74. And that's in miles per hour, I believe. It's okay, and that's an eight something. I don't know. Cool. So I'm gonna do one more. I'll let you guys try the your homework is to finish this whole thing here. Okay. A lot of these questions are just repeats uh, with different numbers. I'm very original. All right. So, but let's talk about four. Yeah, four is a little weird, but it's nice because it really drives home the point of these questions here. Oh my goodness gracious. All right. So, you ready? It says the area of a square is increasing at 40 square centimeters per minute. For whatever reason, the area is getting bigger. It's changing at that rate. So before I even do anything else, you want to mark down, that's DA dt. Okay? That's how fast the area is changing. So DA dt. is positive 40 square centimeters per minute. Okay? My question, though, is how fast is the perimeter changing? So what we're looking for is dp dt. So sometimes I get students that are like, I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to start this thing. If you can't read this and look for the rates of change and mark out what they are, like, that should be your first step, basically. If you're like, I don't know what to do, I can't even start it, read through it, try to find the rates of change. Okay? Then find out what they're asking you for the rate of change of, because they will ask you for a rate of change. And then think, can I get an equation that links these two things together? Now, we have, we have area perimeter, basically. I have an area equation, right? But it doesn't involve perimeter, it involves a sideline. True? And I have a perimeter equation, and that doesn't involve area, that involves a sideline. So because both those like area and perimeter don't go into one equation, we can do some algebra and move it around so we can add A and P in one equation, or the connection between them is going to be the side length, since they both involve side length. All right? So um, after doing this, first step, definitely write down what we know and what we want to know. Get an equation that has what we want to know in it. So perimeter. I'm going to start with perimeter because that's my main goal, to get DP, DT. So I know the perimeter. Let's draw my square over here. There it is. Look at that thing. The side lengths are changing. So you can call them whatever you like. But the perimeter of that incredible square is 4 times x. Okay? And because I don't care about the perimeter, I care about how fast the perimeter is changing, I'm going to derive that equation. Yeah, which is pretty easy to do, right? And then we'll deal with the consequences of that when we got to find some other junk. But it's just 4 dx dt. It's pretty nice. This is super nice because perimeter and the side length are linearly related. So the derivatives are easy. We okay with that? So it's it right there. So you get, okay, I see dp dt on my paper. It's important to label it and write it down. I see it on my paper. There it is. But in order to find it, I need to know what dx dt is. So that changes my question now from what's the perimeter's rate of change to what's the side length rate of change. Because if I can find that, I can find what I want. Okay? Um, I don't know the side length rate of change, though. I know the area. However, if I write my area equation, I'm going to have area and x in it. And if I derive that, I'm going to get both rates of change there. All right? So area is just x squared. And when I derive that, I get a dA dt, which is great because I know it. And I get a dx dt, which is great, because I want to know it. And I get an x, which is not great. Nobody wants an x. Um, no, no, no. Uh, we got to find it, okay? So we need now Now we need x. So see how this is like transferring? First, we want dp dt. Well, that means we need to know dx dt. To find that, that means I need to know what x is. And anytime you want to find something, you're going to have to use something else to get it. So, right now, I need to know what x is, and the only other piece of information I've given you is at the diagonal, 
is 8 root 2. And everybody knows if the diagonal of a square is anything, the way you find the side length is you divide it by root 2. Okay, that's from 45, 45, 90 triangles. You can also do Pythagorean theorem here if you really want to. I'm saying this, like if you didn't know that x had to be 8 based off the diagonal being 8 root 2, you could have said, oh, well, x squared plus x squared has to equal 8 root 2 squared, true. And you can solve that equation, and you're going to get 8. Okay? But now that I know that x is 8, and I know dA dt is 40, I can plug all of this junk into here. Okay. So then the hard part is usually like, where kids ask a lot of questions generally is like, I don't know how to find this thing that I'm missing. And that's tough sometimes. Testing's over. Good for you. What's up? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you get 40 over 16, which is what? Five halves? That's what dx dt is, which means dp dt is 4 times 5 halves. And if you follow the units all the way down, or you just think what perimeter has to be measured in, this is going to be 10. Perimeter is going to be measured in, if area is measured in centimeters squared, perimeter is going to be measured in just centimeters, and that's per minute or second. Minute. So if the area is growing 40 square centimeters a minute at that point in time, the perimeter is growing by 10 centimeters a minute. And that's, the ba that's about as hard as these things get. That's the basic thought process for these. What rate do I know? What do I want? Get them in an equation, derive it. Okay. So homework is to finish that whole worksheet.